Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to go over the interesting rise and fall of Jake Parker's Inktober and deep dive into the reasons why it has been technically cancelled this year. We will also go over the plagiarism accusations as well as other controversies surrounding Inktober in general. So if you don't know much about Jake Parker or Inktober or any of the other things surrounding the whole situation, don't worry, I got you. We will go on memory lane and discuss the whole history of it all. I want to issue a disclaimer. Please don't send any hate or harassment towards any of the people I mentioned in this video. That is not the purpose of my video, so again I wish that you all refrain from doing that. Finally, without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. So who is Jake Parker and what is Inktober exactly? Well, according to Wikipedia, Jake Parker is an illustrator, animator, concept artist, and a short story comic creator. He has worked on many famous animations such as Rio, Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, and Horton Here Say Who, just to name a few. He also illustrated a New York's best-selling children's book called The Little Snowplow, along with many other well-respected books and comics. He is overall a very skilled and talented individual who has been a staple in the art community for over decades. He has inspired many with his works and achievements, but one in particular made a permanent mark on the art community. In 2009, Jake Parker created an annual ink drawing event called Inktober. The goal of Inktober was to draw something with ink every day of October and share it to your social media. The point of the challenge was to improve on your drawing and inking skills by practicing them daily for the whole month of October. This trend really took off and it soon became a highly anticipated event that millions of artists took part in annually for years to come. In 2016, Jake Parker introduced something called prompts to Inktober and started to give out different words for every day of October that artists can interpret and draw. This was to challenge artists even further to use their creativity while also improving with their inking and drawing skills. Inktober became so beloved by the art community that every year when October came around, all your social media feed would be filled with different kind of ink drawings and prompts. Soon even the digital artists joined in the fun and created digital artworks following the Inktober prompt. This caused some controversy within the art community as many had the belief that digital art wasn't quote-unquote real art or that it was quote-unquote cheating since you don't have to use ink when drawing digitally. Of course recently it has been more acceptable to participate in Inktober with digital art as well because of the normalization of digital art in general. In 2017, Jake Parker filed to register Inktober as a trademark and things would start taking a different turn when his lawyer started to enforce the trademark in late 2019. Artists participating in Inktober, hoping to sell their original Inktober-related artworks, were suddenly sent cease and desist letters out of nowhere. This is when things started to go on a downhill spiral for Jake Parker's Inktober and so the controversies began. As I mentioned before, Inktober was a highly respected and anticipated event for almost a decade before Jake Parker eventually trademarked it. This meant that before the trademark, Inktober had been a general trend in the art community and many artists who participated in it subsequently sold their original Inktober related artworks as prints, comics, books and merch. It was very common for artists to compile all of their original Inktober artworks into a single book or create prints, stickers, or other merchandise of them so they could sell them without issues. Since these were original artworks by these artists, using the prompts presented by Inktober, it was considered normal to sell these artworks with the name Inktober attached to them. After Jake Parker trademarked Inktober, however, this became an issue for the artists who were actively selling these original artworks with the name Inktober attached to them. 
The issue many had with Jake Parker was his lack of transparency. He filed Inktober to be trademarked in March of 2017 and finally registered it as officially trademarked in February of 2018. Nobody knew of this either until Jake Parker got called out on a Facebook art group for sending cease and desist letters to artists selling their original Inktober related art books on Amazon. The post said the following, If you have ever made an Inktober sketchbook and sold it online, keep an eye open for a takedown notice, especially if you use the word Inktober in the title or the logo anywhere on the cover. I just got a takedown notice for my Inktober sketchbook from 2013 that I published on Amazon. So it looks like they're starting there and will likely move on to other platforms afterwards. As you heard, the artist who made the initial post on Facebook stated that their Inktober sketchbook from 2013 was the one that was targeted to be taken down. This specifically angered many, as Inktober had been made popular by the art community as a whole, and for Jake Parker to then have a trademark in 2018 and then send cease and desist letters for works that were released in 2013 didn't sit right with many artists. An artist on Twitter by the name of Kiki Doodle called this out as well after seeing the post on Facebook. They made a thread warning artists about using the hashtag Inktober or even participating in it in the first place because of the issues that could arise from selling trademark property. Kiki Doodle tweeted the following, Attention all artists, no longer participate in hashtag Inktober. Jake Parker, the person who started the tag, has trademarked it and their lawyer is shutting down anyone who is selling things like sketchbooks of their own artwork using the word. It was a public tag started to promote artist growth. It got popular after thousands of artists participated and to now decide only I can make money off of it is predatory. I speak as an artist who has my brand trademark. I never started my brand as an open source art challenge, invited others to make it popular, and then locked them out of profit. Dane has sold his book of his own work since 2013, but now Jake trademarked Inktober. Choosing to trademark something means you're choosing not to allow others to use it. I'm definitely about trademarking brands you start and you build. Jake deserves the positive attention Inktober has brought him and he has made him money, but it was always a public thing. Trademarking and shutting down artists' IP years later is very very selfish. This thread on Twitter really blew up to the point of making Inktober trend even in December. The original artist who first came out on Facebook also replied to the thread clarifying on some things. Someone had asked if Jake Parker's lawyer sent the cease and desist letters intentionally and the original poster responded by saying this. As the person who started this, I can say that it was. I contacted Jake to make sure it was him and not someone trying to squat the trademark and he told me his agent and lawyer are quote-unquote clearing the marketplace in preparation for a book he's publishing next year. Now the book Jake Parker was referring to in that post ended up creating its own plagiarism controversy but I'll discuss that more in depth later on in this video. Going back to the thread however, another artist came out to show proof of one of the cease and desist letters that was sent to them. So the poster attached this screenshot into their tweet. It said the following. Hello, we've received a notice from a third claiming that your use of the Inktober in the following book you submitted for sale through Amazon violates their trademark rights. As a result, we've suspended sales of this title. We expect that you'll compensate this party appropriately for any infringing copies sold. This letter was sent to the artist regarding the Inktober sketchbook collection released in 2017. The most concerning part of the letter was the part where Jake Parker's lawyer alluded to wanting compensation for all of the sold copies of the work. We expect that you'll compensate this party appropriately for any infringing copies sold. This specifically caused an uproar because the artist who received the cease and desist letter got it on their 2017 Inktober art book that was created before the trademark had even been issued. 
There was never a warning to anyone participating in Inktober that they couldn't use the term or sell original works based on the prompts of Inktober. The fact that this could suddenly cause a lot of monetary harm to thousands of artists who have been participating and actively selling their Inktober related content from years ago was extremely shocking and scary for many. Shortly after Inktober started trending on Twitter, Jake Parker responded by first tweeting this. Gah, sorry. Just saw all the Inktober trademark stuff. I'm trying to get a hold of my overzealous lawyer. I asked him to send cease and desist to companies selling Inktober merch. It was never my intention to limit anyone's ability to sell their own work, trying to get this sorted out. Jake Parker also went ahead and reached out to both of the artists that were sent the cease and desist letters and worked things out with them privately. The original Facebook poster, Dane, made an edit to their initial warning post updating us on the situation. From Jake, one thing I'd like to clarify, people who received a cease and desist did not actually get it from my lawyer. It's from Amazon, not my lawyer. The way I understand it is my lawyer contacted Amazon and said that we'd like for Amazon to take down products that are using the Inktober trademark. Amazon confirms that my lawyer presents the trademark in question and then Amazon has a boilerplate message they sent to people who have violated it. Just to clarify, if you are an individual artist selling your own work, I don't want compensation for anything you've sold. I don't want your account suspended or terminated. Those were Amazon's words, not mine. If you are selling an Inktober book on Amazon, please contact me and we can figure out how to keep your products from violating the trademark. Jake Parker also followed this all up by releasing an official statement on the whole trademark controversy and went on to clarify his stance on the matter. He tweeted the following tweets. Here's some clarification about Inktober and the trademark. I ask that you read the whole thing. If this directly affects a project you had pulled from Amazon or Etsy, and if you have questions, please contact me directly on my website. Just want to say thank you for everyone who has waited to hear what I had to say before jumping into conclusions. In his official statement, Jake Parker clarified and laid out some rules on the use of Inktober when using it to sell art or merchandise relating to it. In his statement, he specifically said, If you are an artist, I am not trying to stop you from participating in the Inktober challenge or even from selling your Inktober drawings. Yet, there is a right and a wrong way to reference Inktober. As a participating artist, you can certainly sell your Inktober drawings. As a participating artist, you can reference Inktober in the sales of your drawings. But I'm asking you to do so in the following manner. Please don't use my Inktober logo. This is reserved for sponsors. Totally cool to use the word Inktober together with the year of the participation. For example, Inktober 2019. Use Inktober plus the year as a subtitle, not as a leading title on the cover of your sketchbook. For example, it's okay to use the subtitle based on Inktober 2019 prompts or a similar reference. The public needs a way to distinguish my stuff from your stuff. It's no more complicated than that. If you are an artist and your book is not currently consistent with the above guidelines, please contact me and I will work with you. I'm not trying to stifle the creativity here, but rather I am simply trying to maintain the integrity of the challenge. This official statement and clarification tore the art community into two sides. Those who were of the belief that it was wrong for Jake Parker to trademark such an iconic and popular challenge since it was made famous by the community as a whole, and those who believed that Jake Parker was well within his rights to protect his copyright and intellectual property by trademarking it. Now this is a heated debate that is still going on and I'm actually very curious what you guys think of this. Please let me know your stance in the comment section down below. 2019 ended with a trademark controversy that left the art community wary of supporting Inktober. But the scandals wouldn't stop there. Soon Jake Parker would find himself in bigger trouble because of a plagiarism allegation that was made regarding his upcoming Inktober book.
In September of this year, 2020, a creator and a well-respected artist by the name of Alfonso Dunn came out with a video accusing Jake Parker of plagiarism. For more context, Alfonso Dunn is an OG art YouTuber that has been creating tutorials and art instruction videos on YouTube for almost a decade. He is a splendid art teacher and specializes in pen and ink drawing, which is why he created a book sharing all of his tips and tricks for beginner artists. He released his first book called Pen and Ink Drawing Workbook in 2016, and two years later he released volume 2 of the same book. These books were full of information and educational instructions for artists wanting to improve on their inking skills. The issue with Inktober arose when Alfonso Dunn happened to come across Jake Parker's new book called Inktober All Year Long on Amazon. Dunn was immediately intrigued and interested in the book, so he decided to pre-order it. He proceeded to look through all of the snippets available of the book on Amazon and was shocked to see how similar some of the images of Jake Parker's Inktober book looked to his own. This is when Dunn decided to investigate the matter further to make sure he wasn't overreacting. He took to Jake Parker's Instagram and looked through some of the posts relating to the upcoming Inktober book. There Jake had various promotional posts, including more sneak peeks of the book as well as a 30 second flip through of the whole book. Alfonso decided to go through all of the posts to make sure his fears of being plagiarized were true. He recorded the 30 second flip through of the book and carefully inspected the pages that were visible to us. Is a 30 second flip through of the book. He's just flipping through the book, flipping through it. Awesome. Now. That flip through was 30 seconds, guys. 30 seconds. And in those 30 seconds, I already saw multiple glaring examples from my book in those 30 seconds. As you saw from the clip I showed you from Alfonso Dan's video, it was clear that there were far too many similarities and coincidences in the two books for it to not have been plagiarism. This paired up by the fact that Jake Parker is familiar with Dunn's book proven by the Instagram post that the official Inktober account made on Dunn's book earlier this year. Alfonso Dunn was so shocked and angered by his discoveries that he decided to use his platform to speak against this kind of injustice. He warned his viewers from the dangers of plagiarism and encouraged artists to protect their creative work from similar situations. This created another split in the Inktober and art community as some pushed back against Alfonso's claims by saying that all art instruction books have the same content inside of them. This is misleading, however, because while art instruction books have the same techniques and principles in them, the way to differentiate them from each other is simply by the way the teacher decides to convey and teach these simple concepts to their students. Every art instruction book has similar topics in them, but the way they are explained is different using different teaching methods. The issue with Jake Parker's book was that it followed Alfonso Dunn's book from the same presentation to the same explanations, to the same examples, to even the same order and sometimes even page layout. This is actually very abnormal, since art instruction books usually have different orders, explanations, examples, and presentations. All of that was quite similar, if not identical to Alfonso Dunn's book, and to be frank, it's just too coincidental for it to not have been plagiarized. Another creator by the name of Ethan Becker made a video analyzing the situation and further investigated the plagiarism claims. He inspected various different books with the topic of ink drawing, but many of the books were very different from Alfonso Dunn's book, even though they were teaching the same exact topics. And here I'm about to address the whole question of this whole thing. The subject and the fundamentals that we're talking about here, without a doubt, is the same throughout history. We're not questioning that. All of these books are going to look similar in some way, some form or fashion. Inking strategy, shading, technique, tools used, page layout, words used, yada yada. It's the same, always has been, always will be. Here's the question we need to be asking. How many times do these coincidences align? And also, how many patterns of coincidental alignment does it take to become plagiarism? Texture follows form. Take a closer look at it, 
And I'm like, wow, that looks really familiar. Here I have some examples of how to vary the scale texture, the bumpy texture, and the fur texture. You can even see the forms here, seeing the same thing. Textures follows light and shadow. That's what Alfonso says. Dimensional texture and light. That's what Jake says. These examples are spookily similar. If you have these two pages, it says controlling the range of your gradients. And if you look on Alfonso's page, it says control the range of gradation. Th to me, this is like the third time that these things have lined up. You have page composition ish, and you have wording, which is the titles, and you got the drawing examples. Very, very similar. They're all happening on the, in the same area of the book. Okay, if it happened once, okay. If it happened twice, okay. But as it, as we move more and more down the line, it's like it feels like it's happening too often. All right, my overall conclusion about this graph: overall, the patterns are overlapping more than on three pages. So, which to me, that kind of goes beyond coincidence. We would have to have known that these things were very similar. Now, it was very clear that the only book that was almost identical to Alfonso Dunn's book was none other than Jake Parker's Inktober book. This caused a heated discussion and debate in the art community, and while others dismissed it as a simple coincidence, many were convinced that this was a clear case of plagiarism on Jake Parker's part. Jake Parker released a response to the plagiarism accusations on his social media platforms. He went on to say this in his statement. As you have likely read, my plans to publish Inktober all year long in the first quarter of 2020 have become a point of controversy and much social media speculation. While the book has not yet even been released, a fellow artist reviewed excerpts from images of the book I posted online and accused me of copying his work. I want you to hear this directly from me. I have not plagiarized anyone's work. Of course the books will both discuss similar topics, techniques, tools, steps to learning, etc. That has been common to the craft for decades. Unfortunately, the artist has made this a public issue rather than contacting me directly. I still welcome him to reach out to me independently. The publisher of my book is fully alerted to this matter and together we are addressing the assertions. Because of potential legal aspects, I have been advised against going into any further detail at this time. Although I am confident that my approach and work will be upheld, I will have much more to say. I ask for your patience and support, for at least that you withhold judgment until all of the information is available. On a positive note, I am excited about the upcoming Inktober 2020 challenge and I look forward to seeing all of the amazing art posted by fellow artist Jake. In his statement, Jake Parker criticized Dunn for not contacting him directly about this matter rather than going public with it. It's clear, however, that because of the shock and disappointment Alfonso Dunn must have felt, he may have not wanted to reach out to someone he believed had plagiarized his work in fear of them trying to prepare for a legal defense case against Dunn's claims. After Jake's response to the situation, many of the artists who usually participated in Inktober started to reconsider their support for the challenge. The plagiarism scandal on top of the already existing dissatisfaction due to the Inktober trademark controversy was what led many to steer away from participating in Inktober 2020. As of right now, Jake Parker's upcoming book Inktober All Year Long has been put on hold and the release date has been pushed back due to the publisher conducting an internal investigation onto plagiarism allegations. So far, no news has come of when this book will be published, but if something changes after the release of this video, let me know in the comments. Jake Parker's Inktober used to be beloved by the art community and was a highly anticipated event annually for over a decade. It has now become riddled with controversies and scandals which has turned many away from the challenge. Inktober still hasn't completely died out, but the amount of participants has gone down significantly compared to the previous years. DeviantArt even went as far as cancelling their annual Inktober 2020 awards due to the plagiarism scandal. Because of all these controversies, many artists have taken it upon themselves to continue on the footsteps of Inktober by replacing it with various alternative drawing challenges for the month of October. This way artists can still challenge themselves to draw during the month of October without supporting Inktober directly. Some of these challenges include but are not limited to Drawtober, Witchtober, Gortober, and Spooktober, just to name a few. 
Inktober hasn't been the same in 2020 and with this fresh plagiarism situation still developing, it's hard to say if it will ever rise to its former glory. I personally wish Jake Parker would take accountability for the blatant similarities in his and Alfonso Dunn's books. There are way too many similarities for all of them to have been a coincidence. Even if Jake Parker did this all by accident, I still think it's his responsibility to research other similar books so that he can make sure he isn't making an identical book to someone else's. Another thing I find curious is that we don't have many black owned art instruction books in the market, so it doesn't sit well with me that the one book that Jake Parker decided to allegedly plagiarize was from a fellow black creator. Whether you guys believe it or not, it's actually very common for people to steal ideas and concepts from black people in the black community. And although there is a good chance that Jake Parker didn't have bad intentions while doing all this, I still feel really disappointed to see that yet again Again, something was stolen from a black creator. Regardless of all this though, I do hope that Alfonso Dunn and Jake Parker come to some sort of mutually beneficial conclusion regarding this whole situation. I might make a follow up video depending on how the situation develops further in the future, so subscribe to my channel to keep yourself updated. Shout out to my lovely patrons and Priesturden, B Machias, and a new addition to the group, Shannon. Thank you so much for the support, guys. I drew my favorite character from Junti Ito's horror manga called Tomie in this video, so I hope you guys like how it ended up looking. What are your thoughts on everything we discussed in today's video? Did you participate in October this year or did you participate in an alternative challenge? If so, which one? Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments.